All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, is Yahweh, Bahashem, in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, in the name of Bahashem, the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit. And uh, double honors to the apostles and elders on down, whom I learned this 100% truth from. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered across the four corners of the earth. And um, this is going to be a quick impromptu video through the spirit. Uh, the spirit hopped on me a minute ago to uh, do this quick lesson. And I'm going to entitle the lesson that uh, I may title it somewhere in the lines of uh, the truth is not for everyone. Uh, what sparked me to do this lesson is uh, just got off a chat, you know, with a brother of mine. And um, that's also in this truth. And uh, me and him were just dwelling upon how it's very interesting to know that um, when you are in this truth, a lot of times <clears throat> when you look upon what's going on in the world, you know, when you if you're on social media, you look at certain comments and stuff like that, you can see how much of a deception uh the the reality of deception the reality of like a, a veil has been placed upon a lot of people during these end times that we're living in uh, through uh bible prophecy and um we both was just saying to each other that uh it's very interesting to 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 uh to one will have to ask let's say you know you being in the truth you learning this gospel you're coming into the, you know, the truth, realizing that you are an Israelite. OK, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. But when you're out there and you're trying to reason with another person and you're trying to give them the truth, but they can't see it like you. They they just either one, they can't see it or two, they don't believe. All right. Um, I want to go through a couple of precepts uh, or several precepts, I should say. Um, explaining, you know, why these individuals that we a lot of the times will sit here and question and say, man, like, how can they not see this or why can't they get this? Like, how how come they cannot see what I've been blessed to see or understand what I've been blessed to uh, be open up and understand? OK, and a lot of that has, has to do starting with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, because as the scripture says, um, the deceive and the deceiver are his. Right. So the people who he wants to deceive, the people who he wants to uh, give to their own delusions. All right. He's going to keep a stumbling block upon those certain individuals who he doesn't want to have the truth. And if you are an Israelite, whether you be a man or woman that's in this truth, count yourself blessed. That the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shah, has had mercy upon you to be able uh, to open your eyes to see and ears to hear uh, this truth. OK, now, just because you've been opened up to the truth doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be saved. OK, let me make that very clear, because the scriptures tells us that many are called, but few are chosen. All right. And uh, that's a video for another day. But. Going back to the point, not to digress, I want to start us off in the book of uh, John, the 14th chapter. And uh, let's get to the point. Verse 17, it says, even the spirit of truth, because what's the spirit of truth? OK, the spirit of truth is, is this word. OK, the scriptures tells us that we have to worship uh, the heavenly father who is a spirit. OK, we have to worship the heavenly father through spirit and truth. And then Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy when you get the book of Revelations, right? So John 14 and 17 reads, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with, uh, with you and shall be in you. Okay. And that's a lot of the, you know, the, the uh, Israelites that the heavenly father through his son has woken up in these latter days, starting with the elect. That's why you hear the apostles and elders always say, 
uh, you know, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Why? Because we're hoping that we are a part of that remnant that's going to be saved in the latter days. This is our hope. OK, so even the spirit of truth, which is this wisdom, knowledge and understanding. OK, you guys that are watching the video, you have attained to this wise counsel. All right. Whom the world cannot receive. Now, why can't the world receive the truth? OK, because it's not given for the world to receive the truth. The Heavenly Father has made it to where you're going to have certain people that are going to wake up to what's really going on. And then he's left it to where there are there are going to be certain people that don't wake up. And that's all based upon prophecy. This is the Heavenly Father's movie. He wanted it to be that way uh, for a specific reason. OK, so let's get a quick, uh, quick, quick, quick precept. First Corinthians, I think it was chapter two. Yep. First Corinthians, chapter two, verse 14. Um, it says, but the natural actually, I'll start at. Uh, I'll start at verse 12. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, because remember. Um, the spirit of the world is pretty much their wisdom is foolishness unto the most high. OK. And the scriptures tells us that the wisdom of this world is foolishness. All right. And I've done a video the other day going into that. You can go back and watch that on this channel. But uh, nevertheless, it says now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, which is of the most high, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the most high. OK, because you can't know you can't know the things unless the spirit is, is given unto you. And the scriptures tells us that Yahweh Shah said, unless ye be born again through the spirit. Right. To be born again is to be born through the spirit, meaning how are you able to make yourself clean by uh, taking heed to this word? When you get uh, Psalms, uh, I think it's 119 or the 19 chapter. All right. And then you tie that in through John uh, chapter 15, verse three. OK, now ye are clean through the word. All right. So when you hear the word. All right. You are baptized through the word. OK, you're, you're born again through the spirit because it's the spirit that quicken it. OK, the flesh profits nothing, but it's through the spirit. Right. It says not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, which is of the most high, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the most high. Verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teach it, okay, but which the Holy uh, the Holy Ghost teach it, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, here's the point, verse 14. It says, but the natural man, okay, when it says natural man, it's talking about a, a, a person that's carnal, that's living in the flesh and not walking in the spirit. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of the most high. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. OK, what does it mean to be spiritually discerned? Right. Let's see. Let's look up that word. OK. Strong's G350. Anacrino. Anacrino. OK, on our crino, right? It says examine or judge to investigate, examine, inquire into, scrutinize, sift, question specifically in a forensic sense of a judge to hold an investigation, to interrogate, examine the accused or witnesses, to judge of, uh, estimate, determine the excellence or defects of any person or thing. All right. The strong's definition, it says. Properly to scrutinize, i.e. by implication, investigate, interrogate, determine. And this is what if you are if you're a brother that's in this truth. All right. Uh, you're supposed to have uh, the, the spirit to discern the times that we're in. OK, question the times that we're in. Link it up to biblical prophecy. OK, investigate the man of sin that has been revealed, which is Esau Edom. OK, the Idumean. Right. But uh, when you go and you break it down, the natural man, 
which could be that individual who you're questioning, questioning, saying, why can't they understand this and that is because that they lack discernment. OK, they have not been given that gift to be opened up to ask the question, say, why, why is it that our people are on the bottom? Why is it that we can never get ahead of these other nations? Why are we in this position? What do we go? What do we do wrong as a nation to not really get ahead of ourselves? Right. Why is um, one particular nation ruling the planet Earth and still has us in servitude mentally, not physically, but mentally? OK, these are these are uh, questions that nobody really takes the time to uh, ask. And if they do ask, OK, they. They um they only are given a certain amount of uh, enlightenment uh, to know, but they really are not at that stage to where they're asking the right questions so that their minds can be opened up. And the Holy Spirit is actually drawing them to the apostles and elders, which is the, um, the men of the Lord, the prophets that have been set up to give them that wisdom, knowledge and understand and understanding. Right. Um, so. What you have to understand is the natural man um, receiving not the things of the spirit of the most high because a stumbling block has been placed upon them. All right. The heavenly father has not given them the understanding. When Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he said, no one can come to me except, uh, except uh, Salakia. No one can come to the father except the father sends them to me. Roughly paraphrasing. So in order for you to be woken up in these latter days to understand that you are an Israelite and to understand this wisdom, knowledge and understanding the the heavenly father had to guide you through the spirit. OK, and Yahweh Shah has that power to unlock the spirit um, on you to get that understanding. OK, let's see what precepts they actually got in here. Um. Uh, Yeah, this is another good precept. Uh, Matthew 13 and 11, when Yahweh Shai was uh, on the scene and the disciples asked him, why do you speak in parables? Right. And Yahweh Shai said, uh, Matthew 13, 11 said he answered and sent unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. You see what I'm saying? So those those Israelites at the time who Yahweh Shah was preaching to the ones that didn't get it when he was speaking in parables. And even when he gave the breakdown of the parables, they still didn't get it because it wasn't meant for them to understand. You see what I'm saying? So if you if you are uh, Akim, a brother or Akwath, a, a, a sister that's in this truth and you may have a friend, a colleague at the job, a person, friend of family or whatever that, you know, are sincere people. And you try to get on some sort of spiritual deep level with them, conversing uh, through the scriptures with them and they can't get it. OK, it's not meant for them to get it. Don't keep going back and forth with them. OK, do not keep going back and forth with them. All right. The scripture says to let them, you know, let the let the just be just. OK, let the wicked be, you know, let them do what they're going to do. OK, let every man be persuaded in their own way. All right. You just be thankful and blessed that your eyes are open so that they can see and your ears are open so that they can hear. That's what you have to focus on. Right. Um, let's see what other precepts they got here. Um, let's see. And they got some good precepts here, but um, there's another point I wanted to make. Actually, let's go into the um, let's go into the apocrypha, because even the apocrypha tells you. Um, let me see. Uh, Sirach chapter. I think it's 17. Actually, no, let me just type it in.
Yep. This is the book of Sirach, better known as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6. And um, we'll start at verse 7 and read on down. It says, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So what does that mean? That means when you claim, you know, when you see someone and everything, don't be so quick to credit them in anything. You have to prove them, prove them and try the spirit. All right. Verse eight, for some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of trouble. All right. So realistically, um, they could be, you know, goody, goody friends, goody, goody buddies with you or whatever for their own occasion. But in a day of trouble, OK, it could uh, it could backfire. All right. Uh, as I was saying earlier, when I was talking to my friend, he actually made a great point because um, he has a, a, a brother that he's dealing with at his work. And this brother is uh, in the truth. Uh, you know, he's a young fella. But the issue is, all right, because he's just coming into the truth, he's just going all out. So some of the things that he's saying up there at the job. All right. It's actually um, offending others. OK, now what this brother doesn't understand is, you know, it's good that you have the, that zealous spirit to just want to go out and, and start teaching everything. But remember, I just read in John 14, 17, that the spirit of truth, the world cannot receive. OK, the scripture also says not to cast your pearls in front of swine, meaning what? Meaning this truth is like a set of it's 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 un, it's better than money. It's better than sex. This truth, when you deeply get into this truth and you understand the wisdom and knowledge and understanding, all right, is better than anything that's on this planet Earth. It's the greatest thing to ever have because it gives you life and, and immortality. Who wouldn't want to have that? Now, um, what you got on what that brother has to understand is the scripture also says to walk circumspectively. OK, and be wise and be uh, wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. So you can't just because you know this truth, you can't just go around talking to any old body about it. OK, because there are people that are set up on the left hand side that is out to do you. And, and that's why I, I'm bringing this scripture out. Let me read it again. Sirach chapter six, verse eight. It says, for some man is a friend of his own occasion and will not abide in the day of trouble. All right. Goes on to say verse nine. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. Right. Verse 10. Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. So when it all comes down to it. All right. If if all hell breaks loose. OK, that person, they could either pull you alongside with them to their destruction or worse, they can leave you hanging. So this is why you have to be mindful of some of the things that you say and you have to try the spirit by the spirit. All right. Verse 11. But in thy prosperity, he will be as a uh, be as thyself and will be bold over thy servants. OK, which that 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 young brother is probably feeling now because he he's he's at that point where he's coming into the truth. All right. And. You know, he got excited because he found that he was an Israelite and everything else. So he's boasting himself, which, OK, yeah, you know, we all done it at some point. But when you really start to get into this thing, OK, the scriptures, as I said, is when you eat the whole roll, it's as sweet as honey, but bitter within the stomach. OK, verse 12, if thou be brought low, he will be against thee and will hide himself from thy face. So let's say, for instance, because my, my friend a brother of mine, because he didn't went to this younger brother and gave him the benefit of the doubt or whatever the case may be, if my friend is brought to a lower state, OK, that young brother could probably turn his face against him. You never know. All right. Verse 13, it says, separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends. Why? Well, the first thing the scriptures tells us, uh, Sirach, I believe it's the uh, 12th chapter, I think it is. Um Actually, let's get it. Let me, let me just go to it. Yep. 
Yep. So rock 12 and 10, it says, never trust thine enemy for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Because at the end of the day, your enemy is always out to get you. And who's our number one enemy? The Idumians, Esau, Edom. Okay. Now, um, there's another scripture here. Um, let me go back to yeah that's okay yeah the point let me see yeah no nah, that's that's it on that I think the point has been made from that standpoint but um yeah man going back to um first Corinthians the second chapter um we have to understand that not everybody is meant to get this truth okay and the natural man is not going to receive the spirit of the most high because it wasn't given to them to receive okay now David let's see if I can get that scripture because King David said let their stumbling be uh let um let their tables be made a stumbling block Yeah, bear with me. Yep. Romans, the 11th chapter, verse nine. It says, and David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their uh, back always. Meaning what? <laughs> Meaning your wicked uh, Pharisees, Sadducees back then, your wicked Israelites they are all back again today. This is why they cannot uh, accept the truth, which is these scriptures. And they haven't uh, some of them have woken up, but they don't have the full understanding because it wasn't given unto them to have the full understanding. So even King King David, because all the Apostle Paul is doing here is he's quoting the precept from the book of Psalms. And let's see. Uh, yep. Psalm 69 verses 22 and 23. And this is what King David said. He said, let their table become a snare before them and that which should have been for their welfare. Let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually shake. And that's what's happening right now. You got people that claim to be walking the truth. But at the same time, um, the faith is not in them because they they really don't believe. That's why they, you know, they uh they're. As the scripture says, they're tossed to and fro as like the wind. They're unstable. They have a double mind. They are unstable in all their ways. So that's why they're going and taking the juice. They're going and getting activated. They're trusted in Egypt, the society. All right. Instead of trusted in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. So they're, 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 uh, you know, they have a stumbling block. That has been placed upon them, meaning what they are not going to get this no matter how many breakdowns you do, no matter how many times you try to go and tell them what's up. They're not going to get it. Verse 11, I say, then have they stumbled that they shall fall, God forbid, but rather through their uh, fall. Salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And basically all this is going into is uh, when you read Romans, the full um, chapter uh, 11 in its entirety is just going into how both northern kingdom and the southern kingdom were split. So it was said in prophecy that uh, Yahweh Shah was going to come and preach the word to the Jews, which was uh, the southern kingdom, but was going to provoke them to jealousy because they are because uh, he already knew majority of them was going to reject them. So he was going to go to another people. Uh, another sheep of the uh, that is not of this fold as what the scripture says it was talking about um the uh israelite foreigners who didn't know that they were israelites those were the gentiles they were considered gentiles and that's who we are today we are those gentiles we're coming back into the fold okay our mind has been open to this truth but the ones who rejected 
Yahweh Shah back then, those spirits are here today and they're still rejecting him now. Okay, so they going to get this work. That's why the scripture says in the book of Isaiah. Let's get that real quick. I think it's uh, 66. Or 65. Nah, 66, I believe. Now, Point is in verse four, Isaiah 66 and four says, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. And how was the heavenly father calling through his prophets, starting with the apostles and elders and teachers alike? OK. And it says, because when I called, none did answer when I spake. They did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. OK, and the main thing that they're doing, OK, like today was today. Uh, Thanks killing, a.k.a. Thanksgiving. OK, you got Jake that's celebrating the damn holiday. But how many times have you had information come out? Uh, videos where brothers are breaking down, going into lessons about the actual holiday and what it represents. You're not supposed to be celebrating it. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting the family together and having a nice dinner. That's fine. As long as it's not in ref and as long as you're not uh, reverencing that actual holiday, you can eat. All right. There's nothing wrong with eating turkey and, you know, a nice sweet potato pie. As long as it ain't no damn ham or no pork, you good. All right. Macaroni, cheese, some greens. There ain't nothing wrong with eating that. OK. But if you're if you're coming and, and reversing that holiday, then, yeah, you're going off. All right, because that's not what we're supposed to be doing. But not to digress, this is why the Lord has that stumbling block on a lot of our people, because they didn't choose to hear the word. They didn't choose to get the understanding and it wasn't given to them to get the understanding. So what do we do? What if you are a, a brother or sister that's in the truth and you know, you've been going back and forth with somebody and they just can't get it. Well, let's go to Titus chapter three. We'll start at verse nine. It says, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. So if you're if you're breaking down something, but you have somebody that keeps trying to go back and forth with you about it. Look, send them on their way. Just say, you know, look, don't don't even get caught up in it because then you will be taken in that trap. And then it, if you're not rooted and grounded within this truth, whatever they're throwing out to you, you're going to get sucked in and then you're going to start doubting what you've learned. And you don't don't allow for that to uh, happen. Right. Verse 10. Here's the point. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned to himself. Now, the scripture says he that don't believe in me is condemned already. So these people that don't really believe. All right, they can't get it or whatever. They got the, the, the heavenly father has a heavy judgment placed on them. He don't want them to get it. And it's not up to you to sit up there to go back and forth with them. Just leave them be. Don't even worry about them. Right. Let's let's um, let's look. Let's read this in the NLT. See what it says in the NLT real quick. Um, Titus three and ten. And the NLT on the right side of the screen, it says, if people are causing divisions among you, give a first and a second warning. After that, have nothing more to do with them. Verse 11, for people like that have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them. All right. 
So if you've been woken up to this truth and you're doing the right thing, you've told your brother or you may be a sister in the truth and you told another sister about, yo, hey, man, you know, this is what it really is. All right. You're going off. You maybe want to look at it. If they bucking up against you, if they don't want to take you, whatever. Cool. Let it be. As long as you've warned them and you've tried, you got nothing else to say further on the matter. Reject them after the second warning. Let them be what they're going to be. It's just that plain and simple. Right. Let's get a pre let's get a one more precept and we'll close it out. Um, let me see if I can find it really quickly. Salakia. There's a um let me see if I can find it. It's in the book of Revelations. Salakia, y'all. So I just got to find this. Yep, here it is. Revelations 22. And we'll start at, yep, 2020, 2011. It says, let me highlight that real quick. It says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. OK, so if somebody decides to be one way, let them be one way. OK, you how about shop? You how about shy? Lord willing that they can turn if they're unjust, if they're filthy still, whatever. Lord willing that the Lord can open up their eyes so that they can see and ears so that they can hear and repent. All right. And turn back to the heavenly father and accept this truth. But that's why I brought out Titus three and ten. OK, after the first and second ammunition, which means to warn them. All right. Reject them. If they're causing the division through their words, endless foolish questions and everything, they just keep going on and on after you didn't try to set the record straight. Just keep moving, man. Just keep moving. All right. So. Lord willing, this lesson was edified. I didn't want this to be too long, but uh, hopefully you guys got a lot out of it and you've learned something. And uh, until next time, I say shalom.